Yeah. Adam Cole and Malachi Black, their first match together since 2019. And uh, these these two men had uh, many matches in NXT together, including a, uh, a takeover match in uh, Philadelphia on the famed uh, Andrade Johnny Gargano card. Man, everything revolves around Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, doesn't it? They get a lot of shows. They get a lot of shows. They get a lot of um, attention. So Black initially is not going for the ankle. And uh, Cole was like, it was, they were giving it like some attention on, on commentary, but it felt like they were really dialing it back after I, I think a lot of the, the criticisms of last week's match and how Cole was perceived in that. What did you think about like the ankle story in this match compared to it being such a major focus last week with Buddy Matthews? Well, for, I mean, for one, I, I felt it was more of an artistic choice, John. Like, I mean, for one thing, they, they've already told the ankle story last week with this very similar, like, you know, Buddy Matthews and Malachi back are kind of similar characters in that they're just like these silent killers, right? And you've already told la- last week the story of uh, Cole using, being vulnerable with, with the ankle and him not, like, he, and it was told so well too you know with him being um insecure about his body afterwards so if this felt like more of an an effort to just tell the next chapter of it an elevated chapter of it and they tried to do that by having black show that he he wanted a noble fight with adam cole you know i think maybe on some level recognizing their long-standing rivalry with each other and um on a on a bigger level um recognizing that this was some form of significant match for malachi black which we will talk about at the end of <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, we, we, we will yeah. get to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, this was uh-huh. certainly not built up as a significant match. Um, so Cole tries for the Panama Sunrise, but gets back body dropped. And then Cole ducks the end and manages a destroyer. And then knee, uh, Black responds with a knee strike, gets a two count. Cole does a feint and then kicks out the knee. Black's back with a leg sweep. And then the boom gets cut off with the end. And Black hits it. One, two, and Cole kicks out, and the announcers are just stunned. No one kicks out of the end, and I just thought this is like the ultimate kick out for a Malachi Black match, and it was just, I just felt like this this should have been like a much bigger reaction, but there was... Was this the first time someone has kicked out from, in AEW, this move? Chat room, I, let me know. Brian, in the chat room, I think you specifically, I'm talking to you, fact check that. Is this the first time somebody has kicked out of the end? The only one I could think of off the top of my head is if Cody did in one of their early matches, but it didn't come to mind. Um, regardless, this is an extremely protected move uh, for them. I just did not feel like it was... Um, it just didn't feel like the, the reaction they were expecting uh, for this. And he comes back, hits the Panama Sunrise, and then Cole struggles to get to his feet. And Black can't stand up like his his legs have stopped working. And the announcers are trying to explain. I don't that know he if is, it's that. Is it that he couldn't stand up or that he was unwilling to stand? Well, up? the announcers explained he's in shock from the end. And so Black waves him on to... He's going to die on his sword. He's going to eat the boom, and he does, and he is pinned in 12 minutes and 47 seconds. They show Kyle O'Reilly watching in the trainer's room, and then Cole offers his hand. Malachi isn't going to shake his hand. No, he brings it in for a hug. And um, I, I have no idea what the status is of Malachi Black, but boy, did this feel like a write-off. This felt like, yeah, like this, this felt like um, this man was about to retire or something. Like, I, I know, I, I don't think he is. I'm just saying, it, all of a sudden, it felt like we were being presented with a Malachi Black. Like, this was the end. This was the end for, for Malachi Black, you know? Like, this it was, was also about, the I, end of the end as a finisher. <laughs> that, that's it. This felt as much of a goodbye Malachi Black type of match as you could get. And it came out of nowhere. Um, like certainly with the finish, it felt like they were doing some version of like a Shawn Michaels type of melodramatic, like, I'm sorry, I love you type of moment. Yeah. But because like there was so little lead up to that st- type of storytelling, I don't think any of it really registered with the audience. For me, it just kind of confused me. Um, but it wasn't until like all the hugging and like long, like the long staying shot of, Ma- of Malachi Black on the, uh, on the ramp that uh, I guess it were really sunk in that, okay, he's probably leaving or something. Something like that there there was a story here again it just wasn't told like Excalibur mentioned the fact like Adam Cole has never beaten this guy one-on-one 
and you go like their history, like in the indies, in NXT, outside of a four way match in NXT that Black was a part of. Black has beaten him in every one of his matches, but like no one in no one watching this is going to know that off the top of their head. Um, it just mm-hmm. felt by the end of this, I felt there was way more on Mal. This was more about Malachi Black than it was Adam Cole by the end of it. Like they put so much onto Malachi here. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. It just it just felt like they were doing like the end of like this long drawn out program uh, for a match that was announced seven days ago. Well, this is the mid middle chapter of an Adam Cole MJF story, isn't it? Like it's it's the second match of a series of three that he's supposed to win, and therefore I, um, no focus was put on Malachi Black or, or this match being a significant one for Malachi Black in any sort of way. He was just another obstacle. Yet in the body of the match, we're all of a sudden presented with the f- the final ma- like what could be the final Malachi ba- Black match in in AEW. Um, just came out of nowhere. Makes you almost wonder if like somehow this was like something they just found out over the past few days, and therefore okay, let's quickly like put this in our match. Um, if it's not something, I'm, I'm assuming this is something that they knew was coming. This That's just kind of how contracts work, right? If that's the case, I really do think it's a huge missed opportunity that you didn't tell a deeper story with Malachi Black. You can kind of say maybe representative of almost the entire Mal- Malachi Black AEW relationship too, because by the end of it, how much does he have to show for it? Is he a bigger star? Like, could you say AEW took full advantage of came having in this guy? incredibly great with, with the Cody stuff and this it ne- never reached um the it just d- did not work out i think that's a very safe uh summation of this run and why 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 um, didn't why didn't he reach his potential here i don't know but it uh maybe maybe there were forces that just wanted it to fade the black okay well all right and we state that all like without uh, having yeah, clear. Yeah, he'll, he'll he might just show up on Collision. So we know the House of Black are supposed to be in this tag team thing with Private Party, this tag team tournament. I assume we, that's going to be Matthews and Brody King anyway. But um, yeah, yeah, they only announced it as House of Black. But yes. If you like this video, consider joining our Patreon, the Post Wrestling Cafe. Multiple bonus podcasts every week, ad free shows, and access to our full archive. Otherwise, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. Thank you for watching.